Hello everyone, welcome back to A Better Biomed. And it's Friday, I'm about to start my weekend, and uh, I wanted to get this video out of the way, uh, because I think a lot of you guys, it's at the end of the school year, and you all might be able to benefit from this. And this is coming in from years worth of applying for positions, and uh, my wins and my fails. So I'm gonna make a video about resumes and getting your first job. Now, I recorded this video three, maybe four times now, different days, and each time I didn't seem to get the point across that I wanted to. So I'm gonna try and do it all in one video, and let's see how we do. Improv. So the first thing I wanna to talk to you guys about is your resume. Your resume is your introduction to who you potentially are gonna work for. It shows not only who you are and where you were educated, but it also shows things like your attention to detail and your language skills. So your, your resume, it's going to change as your career changes and you should always keep it updated. But your opinions about your own resume are also going to change. Now there's one point that I want to give to you guys. Your resume should be customized to the job you're applying for. Now in the past, I've made the mistake of taking one resume and applying to a variety of different positions. And you know, that was a pretty big mistake. Um, there's certain keywords that they're looking for in your resume to vouch for you and see if you even qualify for the position. And you have to understand that 90% of the jobs you apply for, your application will never even get past HR. And that's probably because you didn't tailor your, your application and your resume to the position that they're asking for. So I'm going to show you guys my resume. And this is an old one. Now I'm going to tell you guys right now, a lot of you guys are going to have a different opinion on resumes than me. And that's fine. You know, that's the thing about resumes is there is no real standard. But there's certain things you have to have in a resume. And there's one very important thing that I think that you guys should know that a lot of guys just don't seem to grasp. Keep it brief. Now you have to remember, the people that you really want to judge your resume are gonna be the hiring managers. And they're gonna be former technicians like you and me. And these guys, not only do they not have the time to go through a whole bunch of fluff, but they just want specifics. And they want it truncated down, but they want it to be organized and they want it to be accurate and they want to be able to just brief through it really quick and figure out who you are as a technician. So I'm going to show you mine and it's going to be a, a, a really brief resume. Mind you, this is an old one. This one is from probably four or five years ago um, and it's definitely changed since then. I'll show you where it's changed here and there. But nonetheless, it's, it's my resume and it's one that's gotten me to 60,000 plus per year jobs. So, uh, you know, when I got out of the military, this is pretty much what I used, and it, it worked just fine. So if you guys have a different opinion on how a resume should be, that's fine, that's wonderful. Um, I appreciate that you have a difference of opinion. Feel free to create your own video on resumes and post it. I'd love to watch it. Um, but don't criticize me based on how my resume is, because I'll tell you right now, I've had some very good success with this resume, and in fact, this rough resume format, brief as it is, has gotten me to positions, including the one that I got right now. So, with that said, I'm gonna show you guys uh, my resume from five years ago, I think. So, let's bring you on over so you can see what's going on. So you guys can see, this is actually a draft of one of my resumes and I blacked out some information because I would appreciate some sort of privacy um, I guess now if you're applying for a federal position there's certain categories that you're gonna have and you just can't get around that and you can see here I X'd them off and later on I added an intro paragraph which is one to maybe two sentences that explains who you are don't use a bunch of fluff this is where you lose people. That intro paragraph, you start saying you're an inspiring person and yeah, you saved some children from a fire or whatever. 
that right there will lose people so quickly. So the most important information is your contact info. Make sure this is current. This is the most frequently changed piece of all the information that's in here. Make sure it's current. If you get a new cell phone, you get a new telephone number, if you get a new street address, if you have a new email, make sure that you always update this information. I have also fallen faulty to this. And I have lost jobs because this information here was wrong. So make sure that this is absolutely current. So you see here how mine is organized. Uh, you start with the contact info, then you go into an intro paragraph, and then I go into work experience. And my work experience tells who the hospital is, who my supervisor is, the dates that I was hired, and you know how long I worked there, the salary, and the hours per week. Those are all varying things. Uh, some people have them, some people won't, doesn't matter. But here is going to be, this is the bread and butter of this whole category. Responsible for. So you're going to describe what you were responsible for at that position. Now, some guys will list off specific pieces of equipment. And I'll tell you right now, don't list off specific pieces of equipment unless the job you're applying for is for those specific pieces of equipment, like let's say ventilators, anesthesia machines, dialysis or something like that, or even very uh, variable x-rays, you know, if it's a vendor specific piece of equipment, by all means, add it right here. But I have general information. You can see right here, I say responsible for Roper Hospital, OR Suites, anesthesia, telemetry, PACU, ultrasound, James Iron, James Island Surgery Center and West Ashley Eye Center, purchase research, modifications and recalls, equipment inventory, contract management, advanced troubleshooting, repair of computer-based medical systems, creating and maintaining spreadsheets for inventory, digital forms, and paperless processes. That was what I was responsible for. I didn't list off specific pieces of equipment. That is one area where you will instantly date yourself because as you guys know, as you progress through your career, a lot of this equipment that you might have worked on way back here, that's no longer even going to be in the field. So don't list off specific pieces of equipment. List off rough things that you're responsible for. And then you, for you military people, you can see down here that I have U.S. Air Force, Los Angeles, California. My dates of service, my rank, and uh, my supervisor. And you can see down here, I also listed uh, some of my other responsibilities, like uh, the inspections that I passed and some of the roles that they assigned for me. And then down here, I itemized, again, generic terms for uh, what I did. That progresses over here, uh, another duty station that I had, Landstuhl, Germany, and all the stuff that I did. And they get it. If you do labor and delivery, if you do uh, central sterile supply, radiology, I mean, they know that you just went through a whole bunch of equipment in that area. You don't have to list them all out. That's how you lose people. And you can see down here, U.S. Air Force, uh, that's when I was a journeyman, and my prior jobs before the military. And then the second most important piece to this entire thing is your education. And because you're biomeds, you're going to have equipment education. You can see right here that I list off my ultrasounds, my A-plus certifications, and uh, some of the other stuff that I've done. List them all off. I proceed over to here, some of my other educations, relevant coursework, uh, prior jobs, some of the stuff they had me do. And then down here at the bottom, affiliations which are gonna be groups that you're part of. Say you're part of a biomed society, or in this case, um, me and my wife, we own Creative Fabrications, which is a prototyping company. And then down at the bottom, list off your references. Make sure that this stays updated. And get your approval from all the people listed in here and let them know that, hey, would it be okay if I add you to my resume as a resource, a reference? And keep this updated, okay? 
So that was my resume from four or five years ago. And it has since changed. I mean, that's all there is to it. It's going to change. And as you go further on from being a technician into maybe management, it's going to, you know, change. You're going to add more words to it. You're going to change from being a technician. You're going to change some of the categories to manage the team or something like that. Uh, instead of as a team, I worked on this equipment. So it's a living document. It's going to change throughout your career and keep it updated. Now, I want to talk about getting the job because this is a part where a lot of guys are a little confused at what really happens. Now, let's say that there's a hospital that you really want to go and work for. Sometimes there's only one hospital in a city or a town and you really want to work there. Let's say there's not a position open. It happens. You need to use your sources. Your sources. One of your top sources is going to be LinkedIn. Research the medical facility. Find people that work there, especially biomeds. If you can't find biomed, find people that work in facilities or that they're a director of another department and just write them on LinkedIn and say, hey, I'm very interested. Your facility looks awesome. I'm thinking about moving into the area. Is there any chance that you could get me some sort of contact information for the biomed department? And believe it or not, people, they will respond and they'll write you back. And if anything, one day you're going to miraculously get written by the director like I did for this current position. And uh, you're going to have a wonderful conversation with them offline before you even apply for the position. So use LinkedIn. It's a very good resource. Don't treat, leaked, don't treat LinkedIn like it's Facebook. It's not. It keeps a record of everything you say what your comments were if you're a negative person there's a whole history we can find out everything about you so use linkedin like a resource keep it professional and keep it organized and current your second resource find local vendors like let's say you fix surgical equipment find a mitsuho osi table vendor call the company and say who's the local repair rep and you know, find Steris, Carl Stortz. Find out who the repair reps are in your area, and that repair rep will tell you who the people are that are in charge of that hospital. Use your local vendors. They know everything. They know jobs that are coming up. They know people that are retiring. They know people that got injured or fired. Local vendors, they know everything. Use your local vendors. Some of my best friends in the past, some of my best resources were local vendors local biomed societies go on facebook look up your local biomed society almost every state almost every locality has one look them up contact somebody from that from that biomed society especially board members and then ask them what jobs are coming available in that area they'll tell you what hospitals are being built you know who's in charge of each and every hospital your local biomed society is a very big resource and I don't think a lot of people use them the correct way. It's supposed to be a bunch of senior professionals that get together and we try to make the career feel better. But at the same time, they know each other. They know all the hospitals. Half of them have worked around town. So use your local biomed society. Try and reach out to them. Be polite and professional and courteous and just tell them that you'd like to locate to the vicinity and you would love to have the opportunity to work in one of their hospitals and they will say hey i work for this hospital why don't you come on down we'll introduce you to a director or send over a resume you know i'll see if i can read over maybe help you out and relay it over to somebody that i know so use your local biomed societies volunteer if you're in especially a junior biomed. If you're in a town and there's not very many positions open, volunteer. While you're in school, you can volunteer to be a biomed while you're in school. Sometimes you're going to be a gopher. You're just going to run around and fetch equipment. You might not be working on it, but you'll be there. You'll be finding out hospital culture. You'll be getting introduced to many people and you will be 
getting your feet wet, basically. I mean, it's it's the hardest part to this job. You got to start out somewhere. You got to start out slow. Volunteer. I know one guy. Uh, one of my most respectable friends. He uh, volunteered for over a year as a biomed, and he's an older gentleman. And uh, he just came in one day and decided that he wanted to make a change in his life. And he didn't even have to work. As far as I know, he probably didn't have to work another day in his life because he was, you know, he had done very well for himself. And uh, he came into our hospital. He volunteered. He did infusion pumps for a long time. And he was trainable. He was an awesome worker. And he ended up coming up and working with me with the operating rooms. And when I left that hospital, he took charge. He was that awesome of a worker. He just took charge, man. So I'll tell you right now, volunteer. It introduces you to people. It gets you used to the hospital. Maybe you don't even want to work for that hospital. Volunteer and find out if you like that hospital or not. There's certain aspects of the culture you might not appreciate. There's certain things you might love. Volunteer. And one of the things I want to get across at the very end of this video is apply for every single position, whether or not you qualify. I've applied for Biomed 1 positions as a senior level Biomed. I've applied for Biomed 2 and Biomed 3 positions. I've applied for Biomed Director positions. Why? It's not about you getting that position. It has nothing to do with that. What it is, is it's getting you, as a technician, getting your name and your information onto the desk of the person that's going to be hiring for that hospital. Once they figure out that, hey, this dude's really talented, look at this resume, I think we can find a spot for him. And sometimes they'll move technicians around just to make a place for you because they think that you would make a great addition to their team. So apply for positions, whether or not you qualify, and that way there you get your name cycled around. People get to know you. That's the hardest part about getting this job is you know, you have to get yourself out there. You're, you are like a product. You have to advertise yourself. And whether or not you qualify for a position, if you can just get somebody on the telephone and talk to them and show them that you can communicate well, that you know yet what your medical equipment is and you know your job, that's the hardest part. And I'll tell you what, I hope nobody gets offended by this out there, but there are so many technicians out there that need to improve their skill set. So if you prove that you are a very capable asset, they might just make a position for you. The job that I'm currently in, I did not apply for. I applied for other jobs, for jobs that I probably didn't really qualify for on the other side of the city. And what they ended up doing is they moved some technicians around and they made a position out of thin air for me at this hospital because they knew I was coming into the job market. So guys, that's going to be it. I'm going to wrap up this video. All I can say is keep your resume updated. Make sure that your all the information in there is accurate, that it's correct, your grammar is correct, your spelling is correct. Use your resources. Get on LinkedIn. Start contacting people. Contact the hospitals. Find out who's in charge of the biomed departments. Use your local biomed societies. Volunteer. When in doubt, volunteer if you have to. So that's all I have, guys. I hope you like this video. Give me a thumbs up if you do. I've got some other videos for you very soon. Um, it seems like this improv type of format does me quite well because when I try and script it out and whatnot, later on I, I just think, oh, man, I forgot some information. I just got to get it to you. But when I sit down in the calm of my shop here in my garage, I just I can just be very clear and... I can just tell you guys what I really want to say. So I hope you like it. And uh, I'm going to bring you guys some really cool stuff really soon. I've got to edit some footage. So have a good weekend, guys.